In this video, I'll show you how to create a local custom jar with dependencies and add it to your local Maven repository, all using IntelliJ IDEA. Then we'll use that same jar in a new project and pull in the dependency using Maven. Along the way, I'll introduce you to domain-driven design and show you a cool feature of Maven that will help you understand how your code is assembled using the tree command. But let's travel back to where it all started. First, we're going to build a library that we use to model our domain. We'll create a new project in IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. We'll leave the defaults of Java and Maven. Let's customize the group and artifact. The group ID will be com.beginsecure.domain.primitives, and the artifact ID will be domain-primitives. We don't want any sample code since we're building a library, so we'll uncheck that box. And let's click Create. Here we are in the POM file. I already know the dependency we'll be using, so let's go ahead and specify it here. We'll add a dependencies block, and then a dependency item. We'll use the artifact commons lang3 from org.apache.commons, and we'll use the latest version, 3.12.0. I already verified there are no security issues with this version. If you're not familiar with it, the commons lang library provides a lot of helper utilities for stream manipulation, concurrency, and as we'll see in just a moment, validation. Just adding the dependency to our POM is not enough. Let's force a refresh of Maven so it pulls down the dependency if needed and adds it to our project. We'll open the Maven window from the sidebar and expand our project name. Notice right now there are no dependencies. Let's click the reload button. Notice that now we have a dependencies entry. Let's open that up and we see our commons line three package has been added. Notice that it's self-contained and doesn't have any transitive dependencies that it pulls in. Let's close the Maven window and start writing some code. Under source main Java, let's create a package called com.beginsecure.domain.primitives. And we'll create a class called SSN to hold US social security numbers. We have one class level variable called SSN of type string, and we'll specify it to be private final. We'll need a constructor, so we'll go ahead and let IntelliJ generate that for us. At this point, we have a pretty simple POJO. There's really nothing special about it. However, we can use what we know about the semantics of the social security number to add some validation during the construction of our SSN objects. First, our SSN value should not be null, so we can add a test for that from the commons lang3 library. We'll make a decision here and assume that we have embedded dashes in the string, so we can say our values must always be exactly 11 characters long, so we'll add a check for that. Social security numbers follow a specific pattern of three numbers, a dash, two numbers, a dash, and four numbers. There are also certain number sequences that are not allowed. All of this can be captured in a regular expression. We can use the isTrue method from the commons lang3 package and the matches method from the string class to confirm our SSN value conforms to the allowed pattern. Rather than typing in a complex regex, I have saved it here in Notepad++ and will copy and paste it into the code. And I won't bore you with explaining the details in this video. So now we have the basics of our simple library. Let's package it for use. We'll run maven package, which will compile our code and assemble our jar. Let's check out our local maven repository. I'll open a file explorer window and go to the .m2 directory under my account. Go into repository and then into com. Notice all we have there now is Google, which is for some other package on the system. We'll move that to the side for the moment. Now let's run Maven install. Install will copy a new artifact into our local Maven repository. Notice when the command finishes, we have a new entry in the repository called begin secure. Let's drill into that. If we go into domain, primitives, domain dash primitives, we see the 1.0 snapshot folder, which is the version of the artifact we just created. Drilling into that directory, we see the jar that we created containing the code for the SSM class. Let's open up the POM file with Notepad. It contains the Maven coordinates of our jar. There's also an entry for the dependency that we have on Commons Lang 3 for our code to work. As we'll see in just a moment, this will be important when we use this library in another project. Let's close out of this now, and we'll create a new project that we use the domain primitives library we just created. We'll select File, New, Project. We'll give our project a name of Use Domain Primitives and we'll leave everything else as defaults and click Create. 
and will open the project in a new IntelliJ window. After the project finishes loading, I add the custom library we created in the other project to this project. We'll add a dependency block to our POM file as before, and then a dependency. The name of the artifact is domain-primitives, and our group ID is com.beginsecure.domain.primitives, and the version is 1.0 snapshot. Let's open up the Maven window and click on our project name, and click the reload button to update our project. Notice we get a dependencies entry added under plugins. Let's open that up. Our domain primitives package has been added, and under that, we see the transitive dependency for Commons Lang 3 that we require. Recall that was specified in the POM file that accompanied our jar in the local Maven repo. Let's close that in Maven and write some code. We'll drill into source, main, Java, right click and add a class named com.beginsecure.usedomainprimitives. We'll create a simple list of social security numbers called IDs that we'll add members to in our code. We'll add two social security numbers in the correct format to our IDs list. And let's run that code by clicking the green arrow and running the main method. We get an executed zero, meaning our validations passed and our social security numbers were good. Now let's add an obviously bad social security number to our list. It has the wrong format, it's too long, and it contains alphabetic numbers. Running that code, we get an exception. Notice the exception is very clear, and it tells us exactly what's wrong with the data. In this case, the second test, which checked the length of 11, was triggered. Domain-driven design is a really interesting topic and can help you write more secure code. I recommend you check out the book Secure by Design. I have it linked in the description below this video. One last thing before we wrap up, let's look at a really useful Maven command that can help you understand how your projects are constructed. Let's open a terminal window. We'll do a DIR to see where we are. Notice the pom.xml file is here. Let's run maven dependency colon tree. And we get this super interesting ASCII tree that shows us our current project on the first line. Below it is the domain primitives jar that we included in our POM. This is an example of a direct dependency since we included it ourselves in our POM file. Below that is the Commons Lang 3 package that domain primitives requires to run. This is an example of a transitive dependency and something that we don't have direct control over unless we happen to write and maintain the code. We'll discuss transitives more when we look at resolving open source vulnerabilities in a future video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and remember to always begin secure.